Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software tour of the Samsung Epix, a phone that just came out on the AT&T network. Um, this is a follow-up video to the hardware tour video that we just shot, so be sure you check that out, out if you're looking at this phone and you're considering it. Um, I want to start off with the optical mouse. I know a lot of people have been asking about that. So before I get close in on the screen, let me just give you an idea of how well the optical mouse works. So you operate it quite simply by moving your finger along this touchpad here um, below the AT&T logo. And I'll tell you what, guys, it worked really, really well. In fact, I haven't taken out the stylus too many times because you can control really everything through this mouse. And let me show you the settings for it because there are some settings. So if we go over here to finger mouse, we can change the speed of it from fast to medium to slow. Uh, we can also make it into a four-way navigation standard D-pad. If we really don't like having this on the screen, we can also change the pointer. You get a variety of pointers, and if you have a Sam Samsung Omnia, you know that uh, it also has the mouse, but it doesn't have the, the pointers. So we can change it to a little a little ducky here, if you, if you like to have a duck, which is kind of unconventional, but um, I'm going to leave it on the... Uh, on the standard cursor and I'm going to turn it off actually because during this video I'm not going to be using it um, because it's kind of awkward to shoot the screen and be able to operate the mouse at the same time. Okay, and we're back. The Today screen you see here is not the default Today screen that's installed on the e Epix. It's included, and I've turned it on because I think it's kind of the most flashy Today screen. The Epix doesn't have any sort of interface replacement like TouchFlow 3D or SBB Mobile Shell, but this is kind of what they include. So you can do a few things from here. You can go to Favorite People. You can go to Settings, and you get this animation and the sound. We can go to Favorites, which is just a list of favorite programs, and we can press the plus button and uh, find another program that we want to add to the list. And we can go back home. And from here, we can access our email, our email here, our text messages here, and our missed calls. And there's also a link to AT&T Navigator. It's kind of useful. I'll probably leave this on here for the time being. I'll switch over to SPB Mobile Shell after I complete the review. But for now, this looks nice, and it's nice and clean. Now, the, the soft keys that Samsung use on, on, on this device is phone and contacts. So you can't change either of these. You can't customize them, and that's unfortunate. Let's go into the Programs menu and see what we have there. Now, unfortunately, the Programs menu is not flick-friendly. You can't flick and scroll, um, as is the case on other HTC devices that have the flick-scroll functionality. That's unfortunate. Um, we have a lot of AT&T things here, so AT&T Mall, AT&T Music, um, MediaNet, Singular Video, which they should have renamed to AT&T Video. Um, they have an IM client, which works really well. Um, you can use AIM and MSN and all the major messengers. It works quite well for that. Um, going down the list, we have games, and they actually throw in a few extra games, but they're all Java-based, and they don't look that great, and they're all demos, so you have to pay to actually use them for more than a few minutes. Um, going down the list further, we have applications. Let's go in there. And we have some standard things like camera. Uh, going down the list, we have some more Java applications like mobile banking, Fox Sports Mobile Pro. We have a version of Mobi TV, and Mobi TV is really cool. It lets you watch a variety of live TV stations on your device, but uh, it's $10 a month and they only give you five minutes of free viewing as a trial. Um, going down the list, we have something called Photo Slides, which will allow you to take a bunch of photos and make them into a slideshow, which is pretty neat if you take a lot of pictures and you want to show off the kids or other, other things like that. Um, we have a standard RSS reader. We have the Windows Mobile 6.1 Task Manager. And then we have some more Java-based applications here that I'll probably never use, but they're on here if you, if you want to use them. Okay, let's go down the list. We have My Stuff, which is basically like a file explorer. Then we have Organizer, which includes the standard stuff like Calculator and Stopwatch, and then there's Smart Converter, which is, which is pretty useful. I mean, you can use, uh, you can make conversions from milligrams to uh, tons and, and, and that sort of thing, so a lot of people may find that useful. And the device does not come with Opera 9.5. I've just installed that, and I recommend that everybody does that because it's a fantastic browser. It's a lot better than Pocket Internet Explorer, which is what this device uses as its default browser. I should also note that the uh, Office 2007 mobile suite is included, so that's good. And finally, I want to wrap up by showing you the settings because there are some interesting settings that I want to show you. So let's start with 
function key settings. And if you remember in the first video, I talked about how all of the keys on the keyboard are customizable. So you can do function G, that'll launch a certain program. Function H, launch a certain program. Well, this is where you do it from. So if we go to show list, we get a whole listing of all of the different letters that you can assign to launch a program. So that should be great for those that like to do that. Um, if we go into buttons, we see that we can assign the uh, these keys on the bottom to launch certain applications. So we have a camera button here and a mail button here, and all of those are assignable, just like the, the keys on the keyboard are with the function key. Uh, going down the list, we have theme, and we can change the color of the whole uh, environment of the device a little bit. So if we want to do like a... Um, like a kind of like a magenta here, I guess you would call that. That's nah, more pink. Let's do a yellow. And you do OK. And there it is. Color changed. Okay, let's go down the list. We have Video Share, the AT&T Video Share. You have to pay extra for that. That allows you to do live video one way. So I could hold my phone up to something and somebody would see what video I was streaming at that point, but I couldn't see video from their device. Um, we have a full version of voice command, which is good. Always a welcomed addition. Um, we have some settings on what we can do with the wake up button, just the behavior of the standby button. Also in the personal tab, we have sounds and notifications, which will allow us to turn on the vibrate function. So it kind of gives a feeling of haptic feedback, but not really. It's really a waste of battery life. Some people may appreciate it, but I'm just going to leave that turned off because I really don't see the need. Let's go over to the system tab. Um, in backlight, we can adjust the, the keyboard backlight and when it comes on and when it comes off. Unfortunately, this doesn't have a light sensor built in. Uh, we can go to brightness and, of course, change the brightness of the screen. Right now, it's on medium. Um, going down the list, we have the settings for the finger mouse that you already saw. Uh, going down further, we have the standard Windows Mobile 6.1 Task Manager. I have a lot of programs open right now. And let's take a look at how much memory I have uh, with all those programs open right now. A lot, of, a lot of free program memory. 70 megabytes of free program memory. And as you've seen so far, the device is pretty snappy. I mean, I'm going screen to screen at a pretty fast pace. Um, let's finish over in the Connections tab, and we will go to the Wireless Manager, see what it looks like. Standard Windows Mobile Task Manager. Uh, wireless Manager, I should say. It hasn't been skinned by Samsung. And some other more advanced things for the business users, like Proxy Manager and uh, GPRS Authentication, all that sort of thing are in here. And one more feature I want to show you that's included on many Samsung devices, but I never have understood why it's there. If I press and hold on the camera button, watch what happens to the screen. I get a magnifier effect, and I can move around on the screen, I think, by tapping and dragging. I, <laughs> you know, I, I I can be creative in trying to think of a reason somebody would want to use this, but I just can't. I mean, if something's small on the screen in most programs, you can make the text bigger. I wonder why you would want to zoom in like this. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's a feature there if you want to use it. And that's it for the software tour of the Samsung Epics. We've got a lot more to cover in the upcoming review where we'll talk about the pros and the cons in the device. We'll talk about battery life, camera quality, pretty much everything. So watch out for that. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash pocketnowtweets, and you'll know right when the review hits. So that is it for now.